Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm back at Holmes Honda, but we're pulling something off of the used car side of the lot. This is the 2020 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack. And I might as well be showing you a 2022 model because for 2022, there are no major changes for the Challenger in case you were curious. But I must say one thing for sure, and that is the fact that there are few cars on the road today that have more of a muscular look than does the Challenger. Let's dive in and take a look at exactly what this model is. Then we'll do the ultimate test for a used vehicle. We'll take it out on the road for a quick test drive. No matter what angle you look at the Challenger from, it definitely has that strong muscular look. Got the 20 inch rims all the way around, heated power folding side view mirrors. And even though the heated just seems unnecessary at this point in the year when it's nearly 100 degrees outside, at least in Northwest Louisiana, they are there. Of course, you're going to have the front splitter here on the front end, just that overall strong look. And I do like the fact that Dodge, unlike some other car makers, when they have the vents in the hood here, such as what we have on this model, those are functional. And we'll take a closer look at that in just a second when we open the hood and talk about probably the most important detail of this model. Just to give you a quick look at the headlights, have the hazard lights on, Challenger logo and the RT logo on the front end, can't help but mention. One of my favorite features found right here is going to be the struts that help with not only opening the hood, but holding it up. You don't have to go looking around for anything to put in place that does that manually. And of course, under the hood, the 6.4 liter V8, 485 horsepower. And you can just tell by the size of those valve covers that these cylinder heads are large on this motor. 15 miles per gallon city estimated 24 out on the highway and a combined total got ahead of myself there a little bit of 17 miles per gallon. And like I said, as you can see here, there are the vents that are indeed functional, not only the two vents on the side, but let's see if we can give you a good view here of the vent, kind of a scoop in the center of the hood. I have some better pictures than that. Just to show you what's there as far as all of that goes, it is going to allow air into the engine bay and even air out to help keep things nice and cool. You also have a limited slip differential to help out with traction. And in case you're wondering, Yes, this does have the more of a passive entry, at least that's what I call it right here. The button on the top, you have the remote on your person. You can lock and or unlock the interior. That's why the horn honked right there. And of course, to finish things off here in the rear, of course, you've got that nice spoiler, really kind of the perfect size spoiler on the trunk here as far as what's available for these models. Not too much, but not too little. And just a quick look down the side here, a little bit closer look before we hop into the interior. The two most important things I think people are going to want to know about where these cars are concerned is what's under the hood, how does it run, and what kind of shape is the interior in. Of course, you're going to see those aluminum race style pedals down there on the floorboard, all the controls for the headlights and all that good stuff. There's a button to open the trunk if you want to from this vantage point. And before it gets too hot in here, you can hear how the engine fires off and also get a little bit of air flowing here through the interior. And a quick look here at the steering wheel, your steering wheel mounted controls. Of course, you've got voice commands, got the Dodge logo there on the horn area, and of course, cruise control the typical features and functionality you would expect. And yes, you can manually control the automatic eight speed transmission that this model has with the shifter paddles here. Of course, there is probably the most underused item on any vehicle, at least here in Northwest, Northwest Louisiana. Let's get that correct. It's the turn signal or the blinker lever. A lot of people don't know how to use that in Northwest Louisiana for some reason, or maybe they spent too much money on their cars and couldn't afford the blinker option. But as you can see, you have a little bit of a combination trying to get the glare away here, kind of a bright sunny day here. 
combination of the analog gauges that really have kind of an old school look and of course you've got the digital speedometer there in the middle if you want to take advantage of that and let's take a quick look here at what you have through your infotainment screen heated and cooled seats definitely going to take advantage of those cooled seats today i'm grateful for that and of course you've got the controls here to manage the car itself what mode you want to drive in and really how you want to set everything up do you want the traction control on or off what mode do you want the transmission in what about steering all that good stuff everything is really really nice let's go back there real quick everything very easy to use and really pretty self-explanatory i probably don't have to tell you about everything here but as you can see there are a lot of great features depending on what you want to do uh, there's another look at all of the different apps that are available here in this car and i just like the fact that it's not complicated especially if you're somebody who's never had this kind of technology before and there are still a lot of people out there who haven't and you might say man i'm kind of scared of that don't be it's super easy to use especially here in this particular model but the good thing here across the top of the screen you can go into whatever mode you want to i'm going to drive in sport later on and custom is what we were looking at earlier where you can go in and you can have the transmission set to sport you can turn the paddle shifters on and off traction control can be in sport or any other mode you wish depending on what you want to do as you can see right here so basically what it amounts to is you can kind of customize this challenger to your own desires or whatever your situation is it's really pretty simple and just kind of a quick look around here everything for controlling your air conditioning vents or your air conditioner not the vents you control the vents manually right here wow i can't believe i said it that way but we're going to leave that in without editing it out <laughs> there's everything to control the ac here if you want to do it manually down here and the radio of course and here's what the shifter looks like in this particular model with the automatic transmission i'll get you a couple of close-up looks at the seats if you're curious about storage well here's what you have you've got the center console got some connectivity in here usb ports a 12 volt power outlet that you could actually use an adapter to turn into an additional usb port if you wanted to and if you are wanting to find out how much space is down in here i think you could easily fit three to five vehicle visionary t-shirts in the console if you wanted to and a couple of quick details in case you were wondering the exterior color is pitch black and that is accented by a black interior here are highlights from the list of safety features for this challenger parking sensors an emergency communication system, rear exterior parking camera, blind spot and cross path detection, that's both front and rear, electronic stability, and traction control. And if you would like to see a full list of safety features, be sure to check out the link to the Holmes Honda website in the description of the video. And lo and behold, something went wrong with the microphone during the test drive, so I will have to voice that over. But I did try a 0-60 to 60 pull with the draggy, and the Challenger spun the tires in sport mode. But as you can see, I still got a little over 5.5 seconds, and that was backpedaling to 60 miles an hour. So pretty impressive for 485 horsepower. And one thing that I know I have said in the past, and others have said too, is that the Challenger is a great car in a straight line, but not good for corners. Well, I decided to try that out today in the test drive and discovered that actually once you get used to the steering, you can actually track this car on a road course and probably do pretty well. Once you're comfortable with the way it handles and all that good stuff, I think it actually corners quite well. It is a very wide stance. It is a very heavy car, but nonetheless, I was very impressed with the overall experience on the test drive. Everything is easy to get to. The steering, of course, good and tight, a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. And even though the ride quality is a little bit on the stiff side, that is to be expected with a high performance vehicle such as this Challenger RT Scat Pack.
Tell me down in the comments if you plan to buy a Challenger. What year, what model, or do you already own one and just wanted to watch the video because it was about the car you own? Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this model for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that is on the screen right now and I will see you there.